On the news, Nigeria Max Democracy Day 2020. APC disqualify Obasaki from 2020 Edo governorship primaries. And Burundi's ex-president elects to take power as ex-president Pe Nkuruziza dies at 55. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. The 2020 Democracy Day marks President Buhari's fifth year in office. President Buhari used the occasion to reel out some of the achievements of his administration so far. This report has more. About this time last year, President Muhammad Buhari officially began his second term in office after he was re-elected as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The 2020 celebration was without pomp and circumstances owing to peculiar situations caused by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. But that didn't stop the President from speaking on his achievement in the last one year. On economy, the President boasts of 11 quarters of consecutive GDP growth since exiting recession in 2016. The GDP grew from 1.91% in 2018 to 2.27% 2 in 2019, but declined to 1.87% in the first quarter of 2020 as a result of the decline in global economic activities due to COVID-19 pandemic. Every single economy in the world has suffered a decline. Ours has been relatively moderate. While speaking on the state of security, the president condemns the recent killings in the northeastern part of the country, assuring that perpetrators will be brought to justice. All the local governments that were taken over by Boko Haram insurgents in Borno, Yobe and Adamawa have long been recovered and are now occupied by indigents of these areas who were hitherto forced to seek a living in areas far from their ancestral homes. And criminals taking advantage of COVID. Addressing the health challenges in the face of COVID-19 outbreak, the president speaks on the measures his administration has been taking to manage the situation while commiserating with victims. Government is determined to turn this COVID-19 challenge into a motivation to action by building a nationwide public health care system that will help us overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and prepare for any future outbreak. The celebration of the Democracy Day 2020 marks 21 years of uninterrupted civil administration in Nigeria since the handover from the military government in 1999. Adeshawa Odushoga, TV360, Lagos. It's Democracy Day in Nigeria and the country is celebrating one man who have come to be seen as the representation of democracy, Moshud Abiola. In commemoration of Nigeria's Democracy Day, human rights and pro-democracy activist Joe Odumaki has bemoaned the state of democratic practice in the country. Odumaki says since the controversial 1993 election, Nigeria's democracy has been lacking in integrity. She's calling for a return to the times of free and credible elections in the country. Now, correspondent Adeshawa Odushaga completes the story. This is the June 12. We are celebrating today and we will nurture it to our next generation. It's the second time Democracy Day will be celebrated on June 12, after which was moved from May 29th, following 25 years of stringent agitation and pro-democracy activism. This day remains a historic moment for Nigerians as it coincides with the annulment of the 1993 presidential elections won by late Chief Mashud Kashimawo Abiola. The June 12 election is widely regarded as the freest and fairest in Nigeria's history, breaking barriers of ethnicity, religion or language. 
27 years down the line, pro-democracy activist Joe Odumaki expresses the displeasure on the practice of modern democracy in Nigeria. We have elections in Nigeria where people ballot with their blood. So what have we learned? If we are kept to the ideas of June 12, then we should learn to conduct elections in a very, very peaceful manner. June 12 was about ballot integrity. And we need integrity of the process for us to entrench a democratic culture in Nigeria. While the pronouncement of June 12 is Democracy Day may be considered victory at last for pro-democracy activists, but that is not the last of their demand. There must be the need for us to see that a Judicial Commission of Inquiry is established to ascertain how M.K. Abiola died in detention. That would do us a lot of good if we are talking about justice, fairness, and equity. One will feel happier and better fulfilled if the symbol of that election, M.K. Abiola, can be declared in a posthumous way as a past president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Buhari had in 2018 directed that Nigeria's Democracy Day, previously marked every May 29th, be shifted to June 12 to honor Moshuda Biola. The 2020 Democracy Day, unlike the usual practice, will be celebrated in low key owing to the pandemic ravaging the country, which has limited social gatherings to avoid widespread transmission. Adesha Wadushoga, TV360, Lagos. Some Nigerians have also been voicing their different thoughts on the achievements and issues in the democratic dispensation so far. They've also been highlighting key steps that need to be taken to further strengthen Nigeria's democracy. Basically for the government, they, they need to be more transparent and operate an all-inclusive government. And they should be open to critic a lot of criticism because democracy, the beauty of democracy is all about criticisms. For over some time now, Nigerians have not and have not enjoyed the way they should. Dividends of democracy have a huge toll on the masses. So I will appeal to the federal government to also use this moment to develop some sectors of the economy, to lift, most importantly, to lift many Nigerians out of poverty. Today, uh, when we looked at our political elites, we know that we have gotten it wrong in several places and several diverse areas. But I want us to use this opportunity to sit down and rethink and restructure how we want our country. This is a beautiful country God has given to us and we don't have any other country to go. But the only thing is that we need to really work on ourselves as individuals. Igbo members of the All Progressives Congress under the ages of Indigo in APC Lagos has enjoined Nigerians and celebrate uh, Democracy Day. Speaking to Newsman on Friday, APC Chieftain and Special Advisor on Drainage and Water Resources, Joe Ibukwe, expressed his appreciation to President Muhammadu Buhari for declaring June 12 as Democracy Day. He described Buhari's action as a step in the right direction while calling on the federal government to adequately compensate Abiola's family. What happened today is an indication that Chief M.K. Abiola and the wife and thousands of other people that died were not in vain. I'm also alerting the world and Nigerians that seven heads of state went through where we are, we are in the seat of power for 27 years. Seven of them did not do anything, except this one, this president, this good man from Daura, that came in 2015. I recognized Abiola. That's why we are happy. That's why we're here today. And we want to appreciate the president for doing that. But we're adding another caveat. No amount of money you will give to Abiola, Abiola's family will remove the pains, but they must be adequately compensated. 
Still on political matters, the All Progressives Congress APC has disqualified Governor Gordon Obasaki and two others from contesting the July 22nd primary elections. The screening committee announced the disqualification while presenting its report to the Adam Soshomali led National Working Committee in Abuja on Friday. The two other disqualified aspirants are Chris Ogemoyi and Matthew Idurukenwe. While presenting the report, chairman of the panel, Jonathan Ayuba, explained that Abasaki was disqualified because the committee could not vouch for the authenticity of his higher school certificate. Ayuba said the committee was thorough in the process of conducting its screening exercise adding that the process was recorded and the unedited recording will be made available to the party. Reacting to his disqualification, Obasaki says he has accepted it in good faith and will not appeal. The attestation from the Institution of Continuing Education Felicity from where the alleged higher school level certificate which, indicate, which was indicated in the period of attendance was obtained as obtained is of no consequence, as it is only attest that Gordon Abasaki was a student of the institute. So all we had was just like an attendance, but not results. Although the committee received a petition on his University of Ibadan Bachelor of Class Classical Studies certificate, which he submitted to Ali in 2016. When he, first, when he first contested as governor, the committee on further probing was presented with the original certificate issued by the University of Ibadan, and the original was cited. On the NYC certificate, that is the National Youth Service Certificate, dated 6 August 1980, issued by, to the aspirant, the committee observed that the, it bears the name Obasek Goldwyn, while this may be an error on the part of the issuing authority, we observed, however, that the aspirant has not taken any step whatsoever to have the anomaly corrected by the issuing authority. We, we conclude that the high school certificate was defective. The NYC certificate of the National Service Corps and the Act that the aspirant taking the party to court because these are some of the issues in which we have attached and based on the party constitution this has made us to recommend that the above candidate therefore His Excellency Godwin Obaseke is not eligible to participate in the election. As the trading of blames rages on between members of the National Assembly and the Interim Management Committee of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, spokesperson of the House of Reps, Benjamin Kalu, says the ongoing probe of the commission must continue in spite of distractions. President Mohamed Buhari had earlier set up a committee to probe the activities of the commission since inception. However, in an exclusive interview with TV360 Nigeria, Kalu said amid other infractions, the House discovered that no provision was made by the Commission for the forensic audits ordered by the President. The Niger Delta Development Commission was established by former President Olusia Gumoba Sanjo in June year 2000 with the mandate of developing the oil-rich region and addressing the agitations of people who felt neglected by the Nigerian government. With widespread criticism about the operations of the commission, President Muhammad Buhari in 2019 ordered a forensic audit of the organization from inception, explaining that there's been no tangible results for the huge allocations made available to the commission. While this is ongoing, the House of Representatives slammed a new allegation of 40 billion naira mismanagement on the Interim Management Committee of the NDDC. And in response, the commission also accused lawmakers of padding its 2019 budget with about 500 ghost projects. But Rep spokesperson says this allegation is untrue. When you come to this 500 project that we are talking about, it is spread across nine states plus the head office. That is what they share in this 500 project we are talking about. And this 500 project includes the head office of NDDC as a budget, budget item, budget head. It includes the furnishing of the head office. It includes the forensic auditing that is going on. 
They are part of this 500 project we are talking about. So when people hear that 500 project was, or 1,000 project was from National Assembly, it's not true. Kalu also claimed that no provision was made by the commission for the forensic audit ordered by the president. This particular commission did not have any budget line that captured forensic auditing. This is what Nigerians need to do. That budget was presented without any adherence to the directive of Mr. President. That is the truth. That is a role that the Auditor General is supposed to play. Did he play that role in giving the list of external auditors to be chosen from? And also, the, the scale of fees that are supposed to be paid, was, was, did he handle that responsibility? That is a question for another day. And we will discover that in the course of our oversight functions. In another twist of events, the Senate accused the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswill Akwabio, of inserting 500 million naira worth of projects into the 2017 budget of the NDDC. But the minister quickly denied the accusation. And shortly after that, the chairman of the Senate Committee on NDDC, Senator Peter Nwaboshi, was drawn to the center stage, with the commission accusing the lawmaker of using 11 companies in contract scam worth 3.6 billion naira from the commission. Nwaboshi also countered the claim in a statement calling on the NDDC to provide evidence for its claims. As more drama unfolds amid these allegations and counter-allegations, Nigerians are only desirous of the truth. Look at the slums of Bayelsa. Look at the ghetto in, 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 in Port Harcourt. All right? Look at the, the shame, you know, in some parts of Akwaibo. What we are saying is this. When men of timber and caliber, when they come out in the open and say, listen, this person has squandered so, so and so amount of money, or this contract are suspicious, what does it take? Subject yourself to forensics. Subject yourself to scrutiny if you do not have anything to hide. So let the probe begin. Let the truth be told. And let no man's us be God. It doesn't matter whose us is God. You know, but let Nigeria benefit. Let Niger Delta, you know, benefit from this probe. While Nigerians await the truth, the Senate has now given its ad hoc committee set up to investigate the alleged 40 billion naira fraud at the NDDC four more weeks to submit its report at plenary. Unyi Adekunle, TV360, Nigeria. Just see watching news now on TV360, Nigeria. Still to come, health worker dies of COVID-19 in Gumbi State. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, yeah. and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. You're still watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. Here are some of the stories we've been bringing you this hour. President Muhammad Buhari has been listing his achievements in power, including uh, sect sectors such as security, power, infrastructural development and more as he marks his fifth year in office. Nigerians from all walks of life celebrate her icon of democracy, Moshud Abiola, as the country marks democracy day on June 12. We also told you that Governor Gordon Obasaki is out of the Edo State Governorship race as the All Progressives Congress has disqualified him from contesting in the Edo Governorship primaries.
Nigeria has recorded its highest daily figure of confirmed COVID-19 cases yet. This comes as the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, announced that 681 new infections were recorded on Thursday. With the latest updates, the total tally of infected people in Nigeria has risen to 14,554, and that's from the 13,873, which was reported on Wednesday evening. Previously, the highest daily number recorded was 663 on Tuesday, June 9th. On Thursday, five deaths were recorded from the virus, bringing the total number of confirmed COVID-19 deaths to 387. A health worker has died of COVID-19 in Gumbi State. The diseased Abubakar Mohammed was a senior registrar in pediatrics with the Federal Teaching Hospital Gumbi State. Chairman of the Gumbi Tax Force, Idris Mohammed, confirmed this on Friday, saying Mohammed died on Tuesday, but the COVID-19 test result returned positive on Friday. Mohammed is the first health worker to die of COVID-19 in Gumbi State. Olena Zelensky, wife of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, has tested positive for COVID-19, but her husband and their two kids tested negative. The Ukrainian First Lady disclosed this on Facebook, saying she felt ill and was not hospitalized, and but was isolating uh, from her husband and children. Ukrainian of officials said it is unknown where and how the First Lady contracted the virus. Let's take a break here and return to bring you updates on sports and more. Oil prices fell on Friday, extending big losses from overnight as U.S. coronavirus cases surged this week and raised the prospect of a second wave of the COVID-19 outbreak hitting demand in the world's top consumer of crude and fuel. Brent was down 3.5% at $37.21 a barrel, having dropped nearly 8% in the previous session. West Texas Intermediate Crude was down 3.8% at $34.97 a barrel, and that's after slumping more than 8% on Thursday. Burundi's president-elect Evarist Nandayashimi is yet set to assume office two months early after the country's constitutional court ruled that he should be sworn in immediately following the sudden death of former leader Pe Onkuruziza. Legally, the Speaker of Parliament Pascal Nyabenda should have become the interim leader, but the cabinet decided to refer to the court for guidance. The government said in a statement on Friday that the court ruled that the interim period is not necessary and Ndayashimi should be sworn in as soon as possible. Now let's talk uh, democracy and sports. Moshud Kashima Olawale Abiola, winner of the annulled June 12, 1993 presidential election, has become symbolic in Nigeria's democratic history. As a man of many parts, the late philanthropist founded and bankrolled Abiola Babes Football Club, which dominated the local football league in his lifetime. One of the team players uh, recounts his experience with the democratic icon MKO Abiola. Taju Disu is a former junior international player for Nigeria and the first team captain of the defunct Abiola Babes, one of Nigeria's leading football club sides in the 70s to the early 90s. Abiola Babes was bankrolled by late MKO Abiola. I was in Lagos playing for uh, schooling in Babes Academy, at the same time playing for John C. White then, you know, because I was in school, I was in Babes Academy. So suddenly, in 19, I think it was 79, 80, Abiola Babes was formed. And at that time, they now needed players. So the coach then, Subar, may so rest in peace, Adewale Subar, was the coach then, the first coach of Abiola when Abiola Babes was first formed. That was how the guy, because he schooled in Lagos. He now came to Lagos, recruited some players, had with some players that he had in Ogun State. That was how I got there. So I was a pioneer member of Abiola Babes. 
Taiju and some other members of Abiola Babes had the opportunity of schooling in the United States through the benevolence of Chief MKO Abiola. If not for Chief Abiola, I probably won't be here, you know, talking to you. I was able to travel to America to go and further my education because of Chief Abiola. Uh, Chief Abiola, you know, was, was that, that kind of um, a, a leader, administrator, uh, anybody would love to work with. This man take all of us, the ex-Abiola base players, as his own children. We are all his own sons. He recalls how he felt when the news of the death of his benefactor, who was incarcerated for years by the military junta, was broken to him. I was watching the World Cup matching on TV. It was Zendia Kiloton who called from New York. I live in Boston with my wife, my kid. My wife was cooking. I was there watching with my junior brothers. and was The phone, the phone rang, came in and I picked it was then there, Akilo told me, did I hear the news? I said, which news? I said, well, my World World Cup. Don't you watch what it is? He said, no. they say Abiola, I didn't even, I, at first I did. When I now listen, I heard Abiola say, what did they say? They said, died, died. Abiola died. So I so said, believe me, and the truth is that I slept off. I, I, I wanted that thing to be like a dream. Abiola died. What happened? This and that. You know, this is a man that make it happen for me. The search continues for a Nigerian like Moshut Kashima Wolawale Abiola, whose footprints in every of his endeavor exudes the essence of humanity. Be the best. Jide Olanero, TV360. And that's it on News Now. I am Aneta Felix. Thank you for watching.